Scotland is a land of castles. Hundreds of them are dotted all over the country and there are hundreds more than that. There are numerous abandoned ruins, have long since crumbled away to nothing, are still occupied. Some are preserved as places of historic importance. It seems every one of them has a tale of supernatural associated with it. Though many are just local stories told by elders to entertain youngsters. A good number of the castles, however, are inhabited by well-documented ghosts, having been seen time and time again by many different witnesses. Welcome to Haunted Scotland. In this documentary, we are investigating Culcrook Castle and what kind of stories this place has to offer. Culcrook Castle was the seat of one of the principal branches of the clan Galbraith for over 300 years. The first recorded laird was Maurice Galbraith, who was with his father, Sir Arthur Galbraith, at Gart Connell. It's credited with the building of the castle during the period 1296 to 1320. Culcrow Castle is a Scottish castle close to the village of Fintry, near Loch Lomond. Culcrow Castle was built in 1296 by Maurice Scobraith. It was the clan seat of Clan Scobraith from 1320 to 1624 when it was sold to a cousin, Alexander Seaton, to settle a financial debt. Still the centre of a 1,600 acre estate, the castle has been converted to a fine country house hotel. One of the rooms in the original keep half of the castle is haunted. Although most accounts describe the spook as admirable, the spirit's identity is unknown. But it is said a murder was committed in this room in 1582. The ghost is found playing a Celtic harp. Eerie bagpipe music has also been heard in the dining room at Culcrough. The noise seems to come from the room below, but despite a thorough search of the entire castle, no source for the sound can be found. In 1632 it was purchased by Robert Napier, a younger son of John Napier, the 8th Laird of Merchiston. The Napier family held the estate for five generations. The castle was used to garrison Oliver Cromwell's troops in 1654. In 1796, the castle was sold to Alexander Spires of Glasgow, who built a cotton mill and distillery in Fintry. It was sold in 1890 to J.C. Dunwaters, then again in 1901 to Walter Menzies. It has been the home of the Barons of Colcrew since 1699 when it was then turned into a hotel, venue and visitor attraction in the 1980s. It passed into the hands of Hercules Robinson in 1970, the last of that line of the Menzies family. It was sold in 1984 to Arthur Haslam, who operated the castle as a hotel. In 2007, ownership was transferred to a holding company in Los Angeles and the property is now managed by Robert Reynolds. Culcrow Castle is a 15th century tower house, an ancestral seat of the Clan Galbraith. A Dutch guest at the castle was a keen researcher on matters paranormal. At night before retiring to bed, he set up his camera on a tripod and when darkness filled the room, opened the shutter. Next morning he closed it again before the lights were turned on. When he returned to the Netherlands and had the film developed, he discovered that as well as his sleeping figure, the camera captured a figure seated on the kist at the foot of his bed. The figure was dressed in white clothing but there were no other clues as to the identity of the person. 
recorded the music and sent a tape to a music society in Edinburgh, he was amazed to discover that the sounds were from bagpipes with no drones, a feature which was added as far back as the Jacobite times in the middle of the 18th century. For seven centuries, the Lairds of Colcruch have not just witnessed history, they have often had a hand in making it. The oldest parts of the castle date back to the 1390s, a time when Scotland was a newly independent after the efforts of William Wallace. Nevertheless, the clans remained more or less permanently at one another's throats over the centuries. Colcruth was the seat of one of the principal branches of the Clan Gilbraith for over 300 years. The lands are thought to have been granted to the family by Moldovan Earl of Lennox. And records show that in 1320, a Maurice Gilbraith owned and lived at Colcruth. Reference is also made to an Andrew Gilbraith of Colcruth and a national instrument of the Clan of Gilbraith were a warlike clan, it is certain that the castle must have witnessed much in its time and its bottle dungeon been in regular use. A dungeon makes an unusual place for a restaurant. This place is now the home to a little boy which has been seen and heard down here. Legend has it the boy was thrown in the dungeons because he was found guilty of theft, but people have heard the cries of the little boy saying he is innocent. The tower of the present house is thought to have been built end of the 15th century and therefore by a Galbraith. There is no signs of ruins in the neighbourhood and therefore this tower is probably on the site of its 1320 predecessor. The Galbraiths of Colcruch were a warlike clan. It is certain that the castle witnessed much warmongering over the time, with its bottle dungeon in regular use. They did not live a quiet life. Thomas was hanged for taking part in a rising under the Earl of Lennox. His estates were forfeited, but later restored to his successor, James. Today the castle is being used as a venue for weddings and for weekends away. Colcrude Castle has many beautiful features and has some dark history but it's also at its moments of happiness a newly married couple start a life together. I hope you enjoyed taking a look into its history and finding out what this castle has to offer.